it's Cece from Cece Restyled and today we're going to be working on a um, nine drawer dresser. It's a French provincial, all wood, um, and we're going to be doing some different processes or techniques and products on um, each of the drawers. So each row of drawers is going to have a similar treatment all the way across. And um, I decided to do the tutorial um, to show you kind of how you can um, use transfers to kind of customize them a little bit with other products, as well as um, a kind of different way to create stripes other than just, you know, black and white or gold and a little bit of blending. And then we've got some, um, oh, what else are we going to do? I don't know. I haven't completely decided on the third row of drawers yet, but first we're going to go ahead and attach some molds to our drawers. So um, to give you a little background on this piece, I went ahead and sanded the whole thing. Um, not all the way to bare wood, but pretty good. This is about how I sanded it. So I didn't take the entire finish off, but most of it. So it's good and um, porous. So it'll, uh, it'll hold whatever we decide to attach to it. Um, I went ahead and I painted the first two rows of drawers on their first coat. And then I realized I wanted to add some moldings. So we're gonna add some moldings real quick to the top row of drawers. And um, I, sh I do want to say that typically I like to add my moldings onto um, the sanded surface like I just showed you. So I usually add my moldings first um, before I paint. Um, but in this case, I'm going to add them between coats because it was an afterthought. Um, you just want to make sure you get them good and secured if you're adding them to paint. Um, and I, I'm confident in my sanding and my prep that it will all adhere together. But if you have a shiny or slick surface or something that doesn't hold paint well and you um, paint and then attach the molds to that, I'm just afraid that the paint will fail and then the mold will fail also. So um, it's kind of really a personal preference. I just like to feel um, safe and make sure I attach it to an, a, a well-prepped surface, okay? Um, but in this case, it's a well-prepped -prep surface and then I apply the first coat of paint. Uh, so this is going to be my top drawer, okay? And I want to do moldings across the top. Um, I'll show you those in just a second. So this is the biggest drawer in the center. I think I want to do something in the middle and then some keyholes on each of the uh, smaller drawers, I believe. I'm not sure, maybe, um, I don't know. I don't know yet. I, sometimes I don't know about my moldings and their placement until I can start laying them out and see what they look like. So I will show you real quick. I cast these molds from um, Amazing Casting Resin, the quick setting kind. Um, using redesign with Prima silicone molds in this one's called Thornton Medallion and I cannot remember the name of this little guy here but I love this one. I use this mold and this mold more than any other molds I think. So um, my medallion is always good for a nice um, keystone or focal point. I also like to use it for um, as an escutcheon or back plate for hardware or keyholes. Um, it just makes them look really fancy. So let's pull this one out and see how much we need to trim it. So if you want more information or a tutorial on casting uh, moldings in different types of materials like resin, hot glue, uh, modeling material, I have videos on that as well, but I'm not gonna get into the casting in this video, just um, we're gonna apply them and, and do all the other embellishments. So um, there's that, you can see it now without the molding in it. And it looks like, let's see, now, sometimes when you have um, cast your moldings in resin, you have to clean up the edges a little bit from overflow. See, um, most of the thinner um, little jagged pieces, you can just kind of get off with your fingernail or a little small X-Acto knife in there. Sometimes if you overfill it a little too much, you gotta get out the knife and kind of scrape it away. But um, this one looks like we can just kind of clean it up with our fingernails a little bit. There's some little scragglers hanging on there. So pop them out them off this one's not so bad actually so I'm pretty happy but I like to do I like to cast my moldings in resin the best I used to use hot glue a lot just because I was impatient <laughs> and um, a lot of times I would run out of resin and I wouldn't have any on hand so I use hot glue and there's some definitely some tips and tricks to using the hot glue for moldings so you don't want to just use any old glue gun and any old um, hot glue you need high temp and you know all that so uh, also, I, that's in my tutorial about moldings, which is a whole separate tutorial. Um, but yeah, we're just cleaning up the edges of this guy real quick. See, I can just kind of break off the little flakes. Um, so there's that one. There's a few more edges to clean up, but look at the detail. The resin just makes such beautiful detail, you know, and 
um, no air bubbles or minimal air bubbles anyways most of the time and um, it's it's great they're flexible to a point right after you um, demold them but then they get harder as they cure uh, over the, over a day or so so if you want them to conform to a curved surface like a Bombay chest or serpentine front chest or something like that, you'll want to demold them right after they turn white and they you can peel them out, um, shape them to your surface and then let them harden in place. Um, so that's that's pretty cool with the resin. Um, but so there's that one. And then we've got Thornton Medallion um, right here, which is this little piece in the middle. I'm not quite sure why they call it Medallion, but that's what the name of it is. So we have this little piece in the middle that's really pretty. Um, again, the little extras, we'll just peel those off there, sweep them up later, right? Um, yeah, this one's not so bad, not so bad at all. So there's a the middle piece. And then these two little swirlies, these little swirly guys, um, you can place them however you wanna configure your molding. So there's not like, a right or a wrong way exactly you know it's just whatever you think looks good and goes with your design you know i've put them like this i've put them like this i've put them like this you know i've put them like this it, it just really depends so we're going to go ahead and try to place those and figure out exactly what we want to use we're going to attach them and then we're going to paint our second coat in a blendy blendy blend so let me move you over here a little bit um so our first row of drawers will be the top row okay uh, oh, where's my keyholes? I had some keyhole moldings. Um, we'll get the keyholes in a minute. Let's figure out exactly where we want to place our big moldings first. So this is the middle drawer. And I really like to use this um, circle mold on, um, you know, drawer, the middle of drawers, like I said, behind a knob or a keyhole. Um, it looks just a little small for this big drawer. So I'm wondering if we don't um, take this and put this on the side drawers, okay? and kind of create a little back plate for a mold on the side drawers, like that. Oh, can you see that? So we'll just tentatively place that little circle medallion on that drawer. And I do have a keyhole. I just gotta go find them, I forgot to grab them. So I have a little keyhole that maybe we'll scoot this down just a tad, and then we'll put our little keyhole right there. I don't know, maybe we'll put the keyhole right on the circle. Maybe we won't use the key. Maybe we'll use the keyholes on the bottom row of drawers. How about that? Um, okay, so we've got our Thornton medallion and placement on that. Let's see. I kind of like how this uh, kind of forms a little V um, and kind of points down into the hardware holes. Um, I wanted to use the original hardware if I can. So um, if I do this, I should be able to um, use my original hardware. But I'm going to double check because I don't want to place my mold and then have to remove it if, it if it won't allow for my hardware to be, you know, returned to that spot. So let's check real quick. So we'll put our hardware in. And let's see. Eh, that, I grabbed this small one. I don't know. That might be too much. It might look too, I don't know. I'm thinking that the hardware is going to be too, too gaudy with, with this. So let's go ahead and move this down and cover those holes up right in the center there. That's what we're gonna do. And then I've got some knobs I can put on either side um, to replace the original hardware. So that's not a problem. I'll just use some little sparkly crystal knobs or something like that. So um, we could place these here like this to kind of elongate our design. Um, like that, I kind of like that. That's not so bad, not so bad. Mm. I kind of like that. Um, we could also, you know, flip them the other way, have them pointing up, or do them up here maybe, um, or swap them. But so far, I think I'm liking the placement of the first the best. So let's go ahead and place, let's see, how did we have them? We had them like this. I think I like this the best so far. Um, let me go ahead and finish cleaning up this molding real quick while I tell you about what, what to adhere your mold to your, um, surface with. So some people use E6000. I'm not a huge fan. Some people use wood glue and that's fine. I don't prefer wood glue when I'm using resin moldings because there's just not much for it to grab onto. Okay. So the wood glue, there's not much tooth on the back of a resin molding. It's pretty slick. Um, so I don't like to use wood glue. 
I like to use Gorilla brand hot glue for the backs of, you know, to attach my um, resin moldings. And the reason is because it's hot and I use a high temperature heat gun. So it gets really, really hot. And when I put that, that um, glue onto the back, it sort of almost melts itself into the back of my resin mold and it detaches really, really well. Uh, even to the painted surface. So I, I've i tried to remove them before. Um, I made a boo-boo and I had to remove a resin molding that I had attached with Gorilla Hot Glue from a piece and it was not easy. So I'm pretty confident in my Gorilla Hot Glue and that's what I like to use to attach moldings made from resin. Um, that's my preference. And in certain cases, if I'm not really confident in it for some reason or other, um, and it's only been a couple times, if I'm not super confident in the, um, my molds lasting on my on my furniture, which my goal in refinishing furniture, um, one of my number one goals is to always create something that's gonna last. It has to be pretty, but it's gotta last. Um, it, maybe it's a pride thing. I don't want people calling me, telling me that their furniture's falling apart or whatever. So um, so I do my best to make sure everything has got a lot um, longevity and will have a long life without defects. Um, Uh, I forgot, I lost my train of thought. I'm finishing cleaning up the edges of this thorn medallion mold real quick. Anyways, oh yeah, here's what I was saying. So if you're not sure about it, you're not super comfortable with it, or you just want some extra, you know, extra power behind that hold, you can shoot little small screws through, you know, um, through your molds. I like to choose a little um, indent in the design so that it hides the screw. And then I just put a little bit of gilding wax over that screw head if it shows. Um, when after I paint and seal and then we're all good no more screw head and you got a nice secure molding all right so here's our Thornton medallion all cleaned up well mostly every time I think I'm done I see another little piece I'm just using my fingernail you can use an exacto knife or a blade of some sort um, for thicker over you know for thicker little chunks I do that but these little thin flakes I just kind of use my fingernail to clean up those edges and I believe now we are good. So there we go. Oh, there we go. we're gonna use it this way. You can use it whatever way you want. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I've had my hot glue gun plugged in, heating, ready to go. And um, like I said, I, I went ahead and painted the first coat, which is going to be a blend of um, apricot to pink or uh, soft pink from Dixie Belle. So this is just my first coat. When I do my second coat, I'll do a nice a uh, little ombre blend on these drawers. And then we're gonna do some stripes out of um, Opal Magic Art Alchemy paints, which are amazing. So, so cool. And so I'm gonna show you that. I'm actually gonna do a live video on it um, on the Redesign with Prima page. And I'll either uh, put that video in this tutorial or I will just, you know, film a, a separate part, a separate video clip um, you know, showing you on some of the other drawers. So let's go ahead and I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to start gluing. We decided we were just going to cover up our holes, right? Because um, we're going to do like a keyhole and a knob here. So um, I would like to know where my keyholes went though. Hmm. There's someone around here. I'm sure of it. Oh, maybe they're in here. Oh, here they are, keyholes. I found them, you guys. Keyholes. So these are a um, redesign with Prima mold called Grandeur Keyholes, and it's got all these lovely keyholes. I usually precast a bunch, so I have some on hand to use when I'm ready. And I think I'm going to use, I've got some different styles. The mold comes with probably, I don't know, 15 different kinds of keyholes or so. And um, I've got, I happen to have three of each style, which works out perfectly. So let's see, this one's nice and cleaned up already around the edge. So we'll go ahead and use this one. Um, see how that one's elongated just a little bit. Look at the detail. Pretty, right? When you um, put, you paint this and put a little bit of glaze or a little bit of gilding wax on it, either or or both, you really make those details pop and they look fantastic. So that's pretty much um, what I always do is add a, at least a gilding wax. So we're going to make sure our little keyhole fits up here. And it looks like it will, and it kind of mimics the shape of our Thornton medallion. So that's neat that um, it will go just perfectly. Just perfectly. All right, so we're going to center. If you want to measure to make sure you're on center, you can do that with a 
measuring tape. I just like to kind to kind of be crazy and eyeball it, but that's okay. As long as it visually looks, you know, centered, we are good. All right, so there is those. I'm gonna go ahead and start by attaching my middle um, Thornton medallion because A, it's already cleaned up around the edges and B, you know, that will establish our center point. So I use a Gorilla hot glue gun. It's 70 watts, super hot. And I use the big long sticks from Gorilla glue, the hot glue. That's the only kind of hot glue that I will use, okay? I don't, I'm very picky about my hot glue. I want to make sure I'm using the best and the most effective. Ow, I just burned my finger. Don't do that. Don't burn your finger. Don't burn your finger. But do cover the back of your mold with the hot glue. You don't want too much. You don't want to just start squirting out. But you got to work quickly because the hot glue will cure or harden and you will, um, it won't stick. So we got to work quickly. Line it up real quick uh, where we want it. Come on. There we go. There we go. And press it on. Hold it down just for firmly for a minute to make sure it's on there. If you do have any hot glue that kind of squirts out of the edges of your molding, you can just take a little X-Acto knife and kind of clean up those little blobs of hot glue um, or your fingernail, but depends on what kind of little crevice you're getting into. But um, like for instance, I got a little squirt of hot glue down there. It's too small for my fingernail. So we're just gonna kind of scoop it out with a little knife, problem solved. And you also, if you get glue gun, glue gun strings, you know what I'm talking about, those little strings that form when you glue stuff with hot glue, it's inevitable, but you just wanna make sure you pick those off because when those end up in your paint, it's not pretty. It's, I mean, it's just not cute. You know what I mean? So pick those off before you paint. All right, so let's see, get that. one more little glue gun blob I want to remove. And then let's see, we'll, we'll let's go ahead and do our keyhole next. Um, keyhole, pretty good and cleaned up. Um, grab our hot glue. I'm pretty sure this is up. Well, it's gonna be up for us. Hot glue on the back. You wanna make sure you try to get all the edges, as close to the edges you can without it squirting you out, you know what I mean? Because you want those edges to be secure, not so nothing catches on them and they rip off. That's embarrassing. You don't want that to happen to so your furniture, your beautiful furniture you work so hard on. All right, so we got that in place. We're gonna just kinda clamp it down with our hand for a minute while that glue starts to cool off and harden. And um, then I'm gonna go ahead and attach these. I gotta clean up the edges of these real quick and then we're gonna attach those just like we did those two. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I'm also going to go ahead and cast another one of these um, medallions for the other drawer. So we've got one drawer to the left, we've got that drawer to the right, and well, they'll both have little medallions on them. Um, and then we will move on to blendy blending our second coat on the draws. So um, let me go ahead and cast that molding, attach those, and then we'll do our blendy blend, okay? So um, we have got our moldings attached, um, minus one that we we're waiting for it to, uh, well, we just haven't attached it yet, but we've got our moldings on this drawer and this drawer attached. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the blending on that. We're gonna do an ombre blend of pink champagne to apricot, which are both chalk mineral paint colors from Dixie Bell. I've got a uh, Mr. Bottle handy, okay, um, of water. I've got, um, Let's see, some shop towels right here. I've got my brushes. For um, painting of any sort of furniture or surface that I want nice and smooth, I like to use a synthetic brush, and um, I use the synthetic brushes from Dixie Bell Paint Company. And for this little uh, project, I'm using the flat medium for both colors. I love the flat medium, it's like, it's my favorite color. My favorite, or my favorite brush. 
It's a good all purpose, all sizes, all areas kind of brush. So I'm gonna get both my paint colors ready. I've got um, apricot, this is like a peachy sort of uh, peach, peach, I guess. And then um, soft pink, which is like a nice baby pink. So when you're blending, you wanna keep your paint wet and workable, which is why we have our Mr. Bottle handy, okay? So our Mr. Bottle of water creates a fine mist rather than droplets like a regular squirt bottle. So you won't have drippy drippies as long as you don't squirt too much. So I'm gonna start with my pink champagne. And I'm just gonna do my second coat. You can see I've already done my first coat here. Um, I've done my first coat to kind of lay out where I want the colors to be, uh, where I want my gradient to fall or my fade to fall. And so now we're just putting on our second coat for some coverage as well as, um, as well as uh, we're gonna do some blending. So I'm gonna work in probably, I'm just gonna do half the drawer at a time. You wanna work in small sections at a time when you're blending. Um, you need the paint to be wet in order to blend. So that is why we're gonna just give it a quick little spray here. Or a quick little mist. Um, the misting will also help alleviate brush strokes. It'll help the paint to self level because it'll leave the paint, you know, with a op more open, more a longer open working time while it's wet. That's why we missed it with water. Part of the reason why we missed it with the water. Um, keeps it wet. It does not dilute it to the point where it, um, you know, affects your coverage, but it does, however, um, make your paint last a little bit longer as well as um, self level out those brush strokes. We'll do one more little quick mist there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my apricot and do my apricot portion down here on this side, small sections at a time. I'll get my bottom here, second coat. And then I'm gonna get, make sure you get your sides of your drawer there. Boom, boom. I'm getting the little grooves and the crevices. You can kind of pounce to get in those little details like the moldings and the little um, inset crevice around the edge. You can just pounce, pounce, pounce. That's how you get in there. And make sure you don't miss any spots. Pain in the butt to miss spots and have to go back when you're all done. Okay, side. All right, so now that we've got our second coat of both colors, we can give it one more little quick mist of water to keep that paint wet. And we're gonna go ahead and grab my blending brush. I like to use a large round wax brush um, to blend with. That's my preference, especially if it's you know about this size of a project. Some smaller areas and jewelry boxes, I use a different brush, but for bigger um, you know, jobs like this, I like to use a fat round wax brush here. So I'm just gonna take it and where the colors meet, I'm just gonna kind of blend them together. These colors blend together really well because they're very similar, very close in shade. So um, they're very easy to blend. You should get your side a little bit and then I wipe off the excess paint from my brush so that, um, you know, I, I would like to keep my brush dry, okay? That's how I do it, that's my technique. Um, everyone's a little bit different, but I like to keep a dry brush. So that was easy peasy how you blend those two colors on um, our drawer face, okay? I just wanted a real subtle, soft, girly blend. This is for a baby dresser, so um, let me do the other side and then we will move on to um, the next row of drawers. I'll show you how we're gonna do the blending on that. We're gonna do sort of a cloudy kind of look, a cloudy sky um, sort of look. You'll see what I'm talking about, um, but we're gonna do that with our blending, kind of create the illusion of some cloudiness happening. So. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this side, just like I did the first side, starting with my pink champagne. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of mist of water, help move that paint around and keep it wet so that I can blend it. Boom. Pink champagne. Now we're gonna move on to our apricot. Apricot, apricot. And get our bottom here. Let's not miss our bottom. Do a little mist. Keep our paint wet. It's especially dry in here lately um, with the air on, or the heat on and stuff like that. So we like to uh, 
keep our paint wet and the, the heat will definitely dry that out. Pounce around in those details to make sure you get all in there with your color. And grab our blendy blendy brush and where the colors meet, we're just gonna kind of blur that little line. Get some, you can do circular motions. You can do a little just kind of back and forth, a little bit of diagonal. Just wanna get those colors to kind of blend together easily and gently. So that is our first row of drawers. Um, here in a bit, we're going to do, like I said, the um, opal magic stripes on there, which will be kind of like an iridescent, shimmery kind of stripe with some art alchemy paint. So uh, that's what we're gonna do on the top row. And here in a second, I will just show you what we're going to do on the second row of drawers. Yes, sec second row of drawers. Um, with our blending and some blues, blue and white. Okay, so now that we have our top row of drawers molded, painted our ombre scheme, we're ready to move on to our second row of drawers, um, which I have gone ahead and I painted the blue, um, blueberry, one coat of blueberry from Dixie Belle. And um, I've got my keyhole moldings applied. And um, we're gonna go ahead and paint a second coat of a blend um, that kind of kind of looks cloudy, like cloudy sky maybe. Uh, I've got some transfers I'm gonna put on there of clouds and we're gonna hand paint some rainbows and things like that, but we wanna give it a nice little backdrop to lay on. So um, we're just gonna kind of create a, a very uh, cloudy-esque sky, okay? And this is super easy. You don't have to be super great at painting, um, you know, portrait or, you know, landscapes by hand or skyscapes or whatever. Um, just a little bit of dabbing and blending here and there and voila, okay? so. Um, like I said, Blueberry is my um, base coat from Dixie Belle Paint Company. I'm using my mini angle to apply that. Um, blueberry can be a pretty thick color. So um, especially when you're blending, you're gonna wanna make sure you have your Mr. Bottle handy and mist that Blueberry while you're painting with it because um, it is thick and it dries quick. So those are two, that's a recipe for brush strokes. <laughs> so yeah, misting with water is your friend in this situation with this color especially, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and give it an entire second coat all over in blueberry. And then we're gonna add in a couple other colors to give it a sort of cloudy look. So some shadows and some highlights we're gonna throw on there. Um, but for now, we're just going to do a base coat of blueberry. I love this color. It's like a pretty periwinkle, bluish with just a hint of purple in it and um, I like to use it a lot in my blends. I don't usually paint it just, you know, anything one solid color anyways. And um, if I did, it definitely probably would not be blueberry, but if you have, that's okay. I do love the color, but it's really great for blending. And like I said, this is a dresser for a newborn baby or soon to be newborn baby. So it's a great little, you know, soft baby-esque kind of color or can be, you know, used in the right, in the right context. So I'm gonna mist, 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 because we wanna make sure blueberry stays wet, okay? So that we can work with it and blending in our little clouds. Okay, mist. Make sure we get a bottom of our draw here. And the top and those grooves. There's some grooves around the edges of these drawers that are a little tough to get in with a big brush. So just gotta kind of pounce those in. No problem, easy peasy. This helps you work that paint around, it's so thick. Helps you get it around, glide around on your surface a little easier with that mist. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I got all my keyhole detailing. Sometimes it's very easy to miss the details on these moldings. If you're looking at it from one angle, not all angles, it's very easy to miss. So I just pounce around the whole thing. One more mist, okay. And that's our blueberry. Okay, second coat of blueberry. Now I'm gonna take my fluff, which is a, a cool kind of white, I think from, well, I, I don't know, maybe not cool. It's just a little, a, a nice crisp white. 
um, from Dixie Belle. And I've got a, got a little chip brush. I'm just gonna use a little chip brush here. So what we're gonna do is start with our fluff and we're gonna do, so the top is up here, obviously. You're looking at the bottom. So the clouds would be kind of up top. So we're just gonna create some little areas of um, lighter color, okay? I'm not gonna sit there and paint actual clouds. Um, we have a transfer for that, but I do wanna give them a nice little, like I said, backdrop to kind of lay on that is pretty. So we're just gonna kind of pounce on some little bits of uh, fluff here and there at the top. Not too much, just enough um, to where we, when we blend it in, it'll kind of lighten up that whole um, front. Ooh. And I'm gonna take my Bell brush. This is a brush from Dixie Bell. It's just a little round, um, really good for a wax brush. And I'm going to pounce our fluff right into the background. So I'm not blending it, you know, stroke it, you know, like with strokes back and forth, like I typically probably would. Um, I'm just pouncing in that color to kind of blend in with the background just a little bit, um, but so you can still see it. Does that make sense? So pounce. Pounce it in, wipe your brush off every once in a while. You'll need to do that because um, otherwise you just get excess paint accumulating on the brush and you don't want that. That's no bueno. So you just wanna pounce it until the color is pretty blended in and it's not chunks of white anymore, okay? So we no longer any chunks of white is when you're done. Okay, a little bit to do over here. Brush is shedding quite a bit. I used a brand new brush. I didn't condition it, so it's shedding a lot. And that's, <laughs> I'm just gonna pick the hairs out. Okay, so once we don't see like chunks of white natural looking chunks of white anymore we are done blending with uh, fluff okay so um, there's our little fluff clouds fluffy clouds okay and now I'm gonna take a little bit of a darker color. can you see that so it's just very subtle and then I'm gonna take a darker color which is stormy seas it's this um, bluish kind of kind of gives off a little bit of a teal vibe um, but it's it's a a smoky kind of bluish, grayish, tealish. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go like this around my edges. I'm creating a shadow or a vignette. In photography, we call it a vignette. What that does, it's shadows around the edges and corners. What that does is create focus on the center, like in a photograph anyway. So in terms of phot photography, a vignette will um, create like a, a frame almost, like a go uh, like a halo or a frame or something to kind of point the, the viewer's eye towards the actual subject, which is usually in the center. So I'm just going around the edges, like kind of at a 45 here. Make a little triangle in the corners. Um, I'm wiping off the excess paint onto the edge of my jar so that I don't have too much and I can just kind of almost dry brush it onto those corners and into the background. So I don't even need to use my blending brush all I got to do is um, just keep, you know, kind of stroking it in there until it blends in with my background. Um, you could spray it with water if it's drying up too fast on you because you do want it to be wet. Mine seems to be okay. I probably could have sprayed it with some water, been okay, but I think the blending is going fine. So, so we're just kind of gently blend that little vignette we made into the edges and corners of our draw face. And then we've got our first draw of the second row. Okay, so on that, we're gonna play some transfers and that will be in our next little segment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two drawers that flank the, each side of this, um, this drawer right here and we'll let those dry and move on, okay? Moving right along. It looks like we're live. Hello, redesigners. It's CC from CC Restyled. And today we're going to use all the things. 
We are going to take this, um, well, the draws of a uh, French provincial nine drawer dresser. It's, you know, one of the long dressers, nine draws. It's going to be a baby changing table for a newborn. So, aw, so sweet. I don't usually do kids furniture. So this is going to be fun for me. It's fun to do things different a little once in a while, you know. Um, so I pulled all the drawers out. I've sanded them down to um, almost bare wood. And um, then after I did that, I went ahead and applied some Redesign with Prima decor molds. Okay, so I have got on, let's see, this draw you see here, I've got um, some keyholes, and this is a mold called Thornton Medallion. And then the keyholes, it's a mold with several different styles of keyholes. It's called um, Grandeur Keyholes. I have a couple of those because I like to just pour keyholes, pour keyholes, pour keyholes out of resin. And that way when I need them, I just can go grab them and use them. I don't have to pour them and wait and pour them and wait every time. So stack up on your keyhole molds. That's the best advice I can give you. Um, it's life changing. Anyways, hi everybody. Thanks for hopping on. We're going to do some fun things today. Um, all the things. So... We're gonna start, well, okay, so added my molds, then I painted my, um, well, on these drawers, this row of drawers that grows across the top of the dresser is all gonna be um, the same treatment, same with the second row of drawers, and then the third row of drawers, same treatment. So it's gonna just, it's gonna be a lot going on, but it's gonna be some, it's gonna be goodness. So um, the top row of drawers is this um, pink to peach ombre. It's, it's Dixie Belle um, soft pink to apricot. So what we're going to be doing on this first row of drawers is some stripes, but we're not going to be doing stripes with just regular old paint or gilding wax. We're going to be doing stripes with Opal Magic acrylic paints from Art Alchemy. They're, um, let me show you. I've done, I did a live uh, a couple months ago with the Opal Magic paints where I just, you know, I just showed you all the different um, colors of Opal Magic and how they look different on white and black. So on white, they turn one color and on black, they turn another and the name will specify what they're going to show as. Um, so like this one, no, not this one. This one is um, violet gold. So on light, it looks violet or gold, and on dark, it looks the other one. I can't remember which is which, but we're about to find out. So it also catches the light and reflects differently. It's very opal-y, you know? That's why they call it opal magic, because it's opal-y and it's kind of magic. Um, we've also got, that's not one. I think I could grab, grab two or three of those just because I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to use. Um, this one is blue gold. So see how it looks kind of teal on, I think that's on black. It looks gold. And then I think that might be all the ones that I brought that are Opal Magic. Yeah, that's all the Opal Magic I brought with me. So I'm going to have to decide if I want my stripes this um, violet gold or blue gold. Or heck, I might do both. I don't know if I can't decide. I usually just use both. So maybe we'll do an ombre of an ombre opal magic Pfft. maybe we'll do that um yeah we're probably gonna have to do that so that's where we're gonna start okay and we'll see where we're on time but if we have time i would love to get to the second row of drawers um i'll be using um sweet lullaby these little clouds here and moons and stars uh, when i got this transfer i was like oh that's cute but i'm never gonna use that like what am i gonna use that for like that's too bad like it's cute, but, and then this job came along. It's a custom job, and I was like, I know what I'm going to use. I'm going to use these little clouds, and we're going to paint little rainbows coming off the clouds, like one or two of them, in um, metallic, Art Alchemy metallic um, paints, which are awesome. So that's fun. One way to customize your transfers, you know, anybody can slap a sweet little by transfer on anything. You want to customize it, just get you a little bit of paint and some brushes or whatever other embellishments you want to kind of make it your own, right? So um, it's a good thing I have my phone on do not disturb. So um, let's do it. Oh, and then on the sides, I don't know, or maybe the bottom row of drawer, they got polka dot stick and style stencils, polka dot stripes, clouds, pastels. Like it's kind of dreamy. It's gonna be dreamy. This, this kid's gonna have a super sweet dresser. Let's go ahead and start here. So I like to start with my stripes. I tape them off with one inch painter's tape. Usually, if I have a huge, you know, surface or tiny surface, you know, I'll either use bigger, bigger painter's tape or on jewelry boxes, I use washi tape for my stripes. But this is just a regular old size. Hey, Rosie, that's my girl. 
Uh, the regular old size drawer, I'm just gonna use regular one inch parents tape. I like to start in the middle and work my way out so that it's symmetrical on each side. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe I'm just OCD, but when I see that and it's not symmetrical, it's, I don't know, it, it kind of, uh, look, uh, it looks better symmetrical. Your stripes look better symmetrical, okay? Take it from me. So we're gonna just start, this is the center, okay? So I'm just gonna go and place this tape here so I know where my center is. If you want to measure your center of your drawer, you can. That's fine, use a measuring tape and find your center. Um, I, I like to eyeball it because I'm crazy. Um, so as long as it looks visually center, you're good, you know? But some people would like to measure it just to uh, be exact and that's fine, do that. Another thing you can do to measure in between your tape spaces, you know, you can lay down a piece next to it and use that as a spacer, you know, lay your next piece down. So you know exactly how far apart to put your pieces of tape. Okay, like I said, I just kind of eyeball it at this point, but um, if you want to just, you know, grab you a little piece of tape as a spacer in between um, stripes, that's probably the easiest way to measure off your stripes. But um, I'm going to go back and forth, so left, right, left, right, with my stripes, trying to keep them as equidistant as possible from each other. I like to have about the same amount of space in between my tape as um, the size of the tape. So I've seen people that have like these really huge fat stripes that they did with small tape and vice versa. Um, that's fine, but personally, my preference is that, that that drives me nuts. I like to have, you know, equidistant stripes. I don't like, there's not too much in this world I like perfect or symmetrical, but stripes are kind of like one of those things, you know, like try, try, try your best. Okay, so we're gonna just keep on taping back and forth. The reason why I'm going back and forth is because, um, you know, if I, t if I do all one side at one time and then I try to go to the other side, it's a lot easier to get off track and, and then, you know, end up at, the, at one side or the other and you have like way bigger space left than on the other side. Um, then you have to start over. So I like to go back and forth. It's just easier to keep track of my uh, symmetry that way. So like I said, we're gonna be using Opal Magic paints for your stripes. So with this tape method, which is pretty common, you can, you know, you can use paint, gilding wax, chalk paste, icing paste, mm, whatever kind of paste wax you want, really. You can use just about anything to make stripes. Um, but I wanna use the Opal Magic because I love the Opal Magic and I don't have too many chances to use it. It's these really pretty pastel iridescent colors and I mean I don't really paint that much pastel iridescent to be honest I love it just don't paint it that much so I have this custom order excuse to paint sparkly pastel metallic whatever I want so I am taking full uh, uh, what's the word I'm gonna go ham on this okay I'm going ham on this with the pastels and sparkles so I'm gonna use all the products redesign uh, you know, basically has to offer on this piece. So that's why I'm, that's why I called it pimping it with Prima because we're going to use a lot of different, um, a lot of different uh, products on this piece. So we'll try to do it rather quickly so we can get through it in a timely manner. Um, that is a little bit small. And so um, if you're just hopping on, um, I painted my drawer faces. So we're going to be doing stripes directly onto the paint. I haven't sealed it yet. Uh, I, could have, I could have sealed it and then done my stripes. Just didn't work out that way. Um, I'm gonna do my stripes and then seal it. No difference really. Um, the Art Alchemy metallic paints that I'm doing the stripes with, or the Opal Magic, I'm sorry, paints, um, they can be last or they can be sealed. It, it's not gonna really make a difference. They're not, um, they're gonna last. So um, it was mostly a time issue is why I'm doing my stripes and then sealing it on this, but doesn't matter. Okay, so back and forth. We're almost done placing on our stripes. Ooh, if you have not seen the Opal Magic paints, if you, um, um, uh, right, I'm pimping the pastels because I, I don't get to paint with pastel that much. I mean, every time I do, someone always makes a comment, what a great piece for a little girl's room. And I'm like, this isn't for a little girl. I mean, it could be, but not necessarily. We don't pigeonhole me. Anyways, um, yeah, I, that, I don't, it's like kind of a pet peeve when people say that, like, assume it's for a child. Okay, because I am a big child, all right? 
So maybe that's why I get offended. I'm a big child, big old child. Me and my three-year-old fight all the time about, um, she wants my stuff and I don't want her to play with it. So we fight, we get into it. But she's three, I'm a grown up, I do what I want. All right, we're almost done taping up our stripes. Again, if you're hopping on, I start in the middle with my stripes and work back and forth so that it's nice and symmetrical. That's the name of the game when we're dealing with stripes. In my opinion, anyways, not symmetrical stripes is just like wreaking havoc on my OCD. So I like to go back and forth and get them as symmetrical as I can. One inch painter's tape. Um, and then you want to make sure you rub down the edges of your tape with your fingernail or, you know, firmly with your finger. Um, especially if you're using just regular, like, chalk type paint or, you know, whatever you paint your furniture with. But it's a little bit uh, more uh, viscous than the acrylic paint we're going to use. So it's, it's kind of hard to keep it from seeping under the tape if you don't have it secured. Um, when I'm making stripes with um, Dixie Belle paint, chalk mineral paint, I use a foam roller and that helps to get crisp, clean um, stripes. Using the metallic, um, these paints, I'm not gonna use a foam roller, I'm just gonna use a little art brush. These are pretty thick, they don't squirt underneath the tape quite as easy um, because they're just, the consistency is a little bit different. And also, uh, when you roll on paint, it uses a lot of paint and um, I would probably have to use like two of these to get my stripes. So we're just gonna use a little art brush. And I think we're gonna do a little ombre stripe with the Opal Magic, so this has got so many layers of goodness on these stripes it's not even funny these are not your regular stripes people these are pimped with prima stripes get it right get it right all right i think we got one more piece of tape on each side and then i'm going to stop yakking and start striping right, this side just going to do it like that boom boom And I like to use the blue painter's tape. A lot of people will swear by frog tape. Um, I can't get frog tape to work to save my life. So I use the blue painter's tape, never had a problem. If it ain't broke, I don't fix it. So we're just gonna stick with the blue. All right, so that's our last stripe there on that end. Now we get to do the fun part, opal magic. So again, I've got blue gold and violet gold, two different colors that will come off as two different colors. Let's go ahead and do the, let's do the violet gold on the top and the uh, blue gold on the bottom. So um, first, shake them up real good, okay? If you can, stir them. I like to take the ends of my art brush usually and kind of just stir. Um, I'm just using like a flat art brush to do my stripes. I like to use a brush that's just a little bit wider than the stripe. That way, you know, you can stay in the stripe and you don't have to do like a thousand passes to cover it. It's just one, you know, Swift little stripey. So um, eh, it's about a an inch and a quarter wide. Uh, and that's the kind of brush I like to use for my stripes. If I can find another one. Here's another one. Oop. And then let's see. Go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the violet gold, okay? Violet gold. Um, it's acrylic paint um, from, it's called the Opal Magic. It's part of the Finnebear line, okay? And um, she's got some cool mixed media stuff, and I like to use it on my furniture. Hey, everybody, if I miss any questions, I shall go back. Oh, Sharla, my draws are um, uh, soft pink ombre into apricot um, stripes. Um, I'll try to catch any uh, questions, but I want to... Um, Marshall, Marshall, you're such a sweetie. I was going to say something else, but okay. So shake it up. I'm going to go ahead and stir it up with the end of my brush. Cause that's, I, 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 I just do that, you know, like why dirty up a spoon when I can just stir it with the end of my brush. And then I wipe it off. Of course, look at this opal magic. You guys though, but oh, hold on. Let me get it. Is that pretty or what? Pretty, right? It's like mesmerizing. I don't even know if you can see it as well as I see it here in real life. Um, you can get these from some, try Etsy. Um, some Prima retailers carry them. I saw these at Hobby Lobby. I'm not going to promise you they still have them or they're in stock, but 
Opal Magic Paints, set of three. I got it at Hobby Lobby. Run, get yours before they sell out. And here we go. So starting with the, my Violet Gold, I'm going to go ahead and, um, since we're doing an ombre, we've decided to do an ombre stripe. I'm just going to go uh, and paint on, let me move you in a little bit closer here. Scooch on over here, guys. Scooch on over. Get in there. Get a nice, good view. Boom. Okay. So, um, actually, you know, we can start on the end. Why not? Why not? So, with my brush, I'm just going to lightly brush on my Opal Magic. Now, I can, I'm going to take my stripe all the way up and all the way down to the edges of the drawers and over and under. Um, you can stop if you want to at this little inset. If you have drawers that have this kind of inset to them, you can stop there and confine your stripes to the inset. It's really just a personal preference. I'm going to go all the way up and over with mine, though. So I'm only going to paint with this color about three quarters of the way down. Oh, two thirds of the way down. Um, and the rest of the way down will be the blue gold. So real quick, with this kind of paint, just like with any metallic, it's very easy to get brush strokes, okay? So in order to get the best look and the most brush stroke free, most sparkly look, you don't want to overwork it. You want to kind of just glide it on there, okay? Get it to cover in one direction. You want to go one direction for a couple reasons. When you're painting stripes, if you go the opposite direction, you're, you're going to be more likely to get excess paint squeezed up underneath those, uh, that tape and, and ew, you know, who wants a nice, who wants a not sharp stripe? So one direction. Okay. If you keep doing all different directions, you're going to get weird looking brush strokes. Okay. And try to do one quick pass. Otherwise you get kind of like, okay, so you know how velvet, when you, when you rub it the different ways, it kind of changes the look of it. It's the same kind of thing. It's like velvet. When you rub it different ways or brush it on different ways, it changes the look. So I think to get the nicest, most, um, sparkly, opaly look, you just got to gently paint in one direction. Let me see if you can get in there a little. Look how pretty that is. Do you see, are you seeing the greenish? Can you see the, um, or the goldish, I'm sorry, kind of the hue, the tint that's coming off there. Um, so it's, it's this lilac, violety kind of color, but in certain lights and on certain colors, you can see, um, sorry, I saw a little ink blob or paint blob. Um, when it catches certain colors, you can see the, the gold, okay? Um, let me unplug this real quick. All right, now you should be able to see it better. Hold on. Let's get in there. See, on my screen, it looks very dark, so I don't see what you see. I can't tell if you're getting the full effect or not of the opal magic. Is it pretty? Wait, what's going on here? Come on. So there, that's it from the side. See how it's like kind of gold coming off a little gold, a little purple, little purple, little gold. See, woo! it's so pretty, right? It's mesmerizing. I'm obsessed with metallics, iridescence, sparkly, anything. I'm like a deer in headlights. All right, so we're just going to stop yapping and go ahead and do the rest of our stripes all the way um, down the drawer. And I'm just, remember, I'm just doing them three uh, two thirds of the way down because I'm going to ombre with another color um, of Opal Magic, okay? So let me do a couple more. I'm going to get to the center and then we'll switch colors and I'll show you the Opal Magic. Ah. Okay. Whoop. There we go. And this one. And this stuff dries pretty quick, okay? So I'm not going to do two coats. I mean, I could. If you want a more opaque um, look, you could do another coat or two. But um, the iridescent, I think it you get the iridescent effect with just one coat just fine, especially since the color that I'm painting this on is fairly close to it already. It's a pink and this is a purple. Um, if I was doing this on my, like, say, white, I may do two coats just to get some more opacity, uh, make the paint more less transparent is what I'm trying to say. Okay, boom. And one more till we get to the center. 
And it's kind of tricky around this molding. So what I do around moldings is I just kind of almost um, fade it out just a little bit. Does that make sense? So I don't try to get exactly around my molding, you know, like uh, paint around it exactly. I try to kind of pounce around it to give it like a faded edge kind of look. You can even use your finger or a dry brush to kind of get that soft, hard line to go away um, where your paint meets the, you know, the background color. Or, you know, I can wipe off my excess paint here and just kind of like pounce the edge so it feathers right around that molding. Feathers, fades, whatever you want to call it. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So you don't have a harsh line <clears throat> like you just tried to cut around the molding, okay? Little pouncy pounce and it looks nice and natural. So now we're going to move on to the bottom part of the um, stripes. And we're going to be using blue gold, okay? I couldn't decide, folks. So when I can't decide, I just go with all, all of the above. That's kind of one of my MOs. I don't know if that's good or bad, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is, right? Okay, so blue gold on the bottoms. I'm going to grab another brush. Oh, that's the same brush. And I'm going to stir it a little bit with the end of my brush because that's how I am. That's just how it be sometimes. Check out that color. Is that yummy or what? Oh my God. I'm such a, I'm geeking out so hard right now. Um, any kind of art supplies, especially if they're sparkly, metallic, opalescent, iridescent, shimmery, sparkly. I geek out. I geek out so hard. I'm like a moth in a freaking light to the light. Okay. So. Stir it up. You want to stir it, stir it, stir it. Shaking it is okay, but you definitely want to try to stir it if you can. Get those pigments. Mica powder is all nice and distributed evenly. So, okay, now we're going to take, um, in case you missed it, when I'm choosing a brush, I like to pick one that is the same size or just a little bit bigger than my width between my tape, so my stripe width. Um, it's just easier that way to me, more efficient. So we're going to get our blue gold paint. We're going to start back over here on the side and we're just going to bring it up. So we're going to bring the stripe up from the bottom and we're just going to do the bottom third or the bottom, uh, yeah, the bottom third. So top two thirds in the violet, bottom two thirds in the blue. And this one is pretty, pretty light. Um, since we're doing blue on pink, we may end up doing two coats of the bottom color um, just because it's so transparent that um, I want a little, a little more opaque. So see how it's kind of a, see how you can kind of see where my first color stopped, that little line there. We'll see how it dries, but I might do a second coat of this uh, blue on the bottom. We'll see. We'll give it a minute and see. But wait till I pull these this tape off, you guys. You're going to be like, oh, my God, it's so pretty. Um, and like I said, when you catch the colors in different lights, it's like, oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So pretty. But then again, I'm a geek for metallic and all that. So maybe you're not. Maybe you don't like it as much as I do, and you're like, that's stupid. But that's okay. Whatever. To each his own. Okay, so just bringing our bottom of our stripe up just a little bit. About a third of the way, and same right here. Just gonna bring it right up to the bottom of the mold and just kind of pounce around the bottom of the mold. And same here. Okay, we're almost halfway through, and then I think by then this part should be dry, so we'll go back over a second coat on the blue gold. Just give it a little bit of umph, make it a little bit more, um, impactful okay there's that and oh okay so let's go ahead and go back over to this side yep that first stripe's already dry I wanted to uh, finish these first, this first half, <coughs> excuse me, first half so I can um, pull the tape off and show you how cool they look, and then we'll move on. 
There we go. So second coat of the blue was a good idea. It's mixing in, um, blending into the top color a little bit better. You can't see that um, harsh line anymore. And it's giving it more of an opalescent kind of look. Really, um, really pretty, girly, um, you know, uh, what's the word? It's just really feminine, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I don't know another word for it. And I'm not a super girly girl, and I love this stuff. I love pastel and metallics, iridescence, but I, I don't consider myself a girly girl by, by any means. Uh, maybe it's more in my personality than my aesthetics that I don't consider myself a girly girl, so I don't know. I don't know. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts today with CC. Can you be a girly girl and not be a girly girl at the same time? I don't know. All right, so second coat of our blue, pouncing around that molding. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure. Oh, I'm going to get a little bit right here. This little corner. Um, okay, I think, let's see. Uh, I think that's, that's good. So I'm going to peel out the stripes so that you can see how this looks with the um, ombre opal magic. Need some magic. Need some magic. All right, ready? I don't know if you're ready for this. I don't know if we're ready. This is my favorite part. Uh-oh, got a little leakage under here where the edge is beveled. So I have beveled edges, or beveled edges on the drawer, and um, my tape must have been not all the way down right there, so I got a little bit of leakage, but that's okay. All I need to do is just touch it up with some um, apricot paint in a little bit after it's dried, no big deal. Let's see if I can wipe up what I can, but. Okay, so we'll just touch those up. No biggie. Keep going. Gosh, that bottom beveled edge is, I didn't apply my tape so great at the bottom beveled edge, but it's all right. Nothing that I can't fix. Nothing I can't bounce back from. I love the I love the opal magic. Oh my gosh, did I say that already? I don't know. What else do you think? Um, so uh, what else do you think you could use the opal magic paints on? I, I like to use them on detailings, like moldings and stuff sometimes instead of gilding wax. Uh, I don't really know what else. I mean, what, do you, what would you use it for? Something different? Something I never even thought of. Something so cool that no one's ever done it before. Let me know if you have any ideas for it. Like, I'm curious. I won't steal your ideas, I promise. I just want to know. I'm just curious. Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, why am I peeling that tape off? I haven't done that half yet, dum-dum. See? I dyed my hair blonde and here I am acting like one. I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to offend anybody. There's nothing wrong with blondes. All right, check it out. So let me get this puppy in the light so you can see the true sparkly goodness. Look at that. Oh. Ah. Do you see the ombre sparkles? I know. I know. I, I went a little crazy. I'm going to have to go replace that piece of tape. But is that, is that so pretty? Look at it in the light when it... Um, I know. I thought of you, Roz, when I said that. I was like, oh, shit. She's going to get mad at me. All right, so I'm gonna have to replace that because see, I got a little carried away here. I'll put that back, and then we'll move on to our next set o set o draws. Oh my gosh, dum dum. One moment. He <laughs> just kidding. Wait, what happened there? I got off somehow. Hold on. Wait, that goes there. Yeah. There. There. And then I'll put, wait, what, ha what happened? See, now I've done mess myself up. All right, I'll mess with that later. But anyway, so Opal Magic, boom, the goodness, all the goodness. 
So we're gonna go ahead and put that drawer away and I'll do that same stripe all the way across on all three draws across that row, okay? So that is the top row. The, uh, the second row of this nine draw dresser is going to get mm, some transfers and maybe some more paint. So here goes uh, the middle top, uh, second row drawer in the middle. I'm using this one to show you because it's the biggest. The other two drawers on the sides are kind of small. So this one I laid down a little base coat of uh, blueberry from Dixie Belle and then I kind of pounced in some fluff which is white to make a little bit of a cloudy kind of look. And then I took some Stormy Caesar on the edges to create a vignette around the, uh, oh sorry, you can't see. <laughs> um, mm. I used a little bit of Stormy Seas, which is like a grayish, tealish, bluish, greenish around the edges to create a vignette. A vignette um, in photography is kind of like a shadow around the, the edges and corners, like a frame almost. And what that does is it creates a focal point to wherever, you know, your vignette is framing. So say, you know, you have a whatever, a flower in the middle. The vignette will draw the eye to that flower. So that's little truth bomb, knowledge bomb for you there. In case you didn't know, now you know. All right, so our middle draw, we're going to be using Sweet Lullaby. Okay, these pretty little clouds. Look how cute the little clouds with their cheeks are. They got their little rosy cheeks. There's pink ones and blue ones and gray ones and some moons and stars. We're gonna go ahead and use, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Actually, I got one already open. This one is called Sweet Lullaby, the one that I thought I would never ever use. And lo and behold, a week later, I got a custom order for a baby dresser. So lucky me. I love it when a plan works out. So let's go ahead and open, maybe, our sweet lullaby. You can use this however you want. Um, you can use it, you know, all together in the pattern that, you know, it's kind of meant to be, or you can cut them up and place them wherever you wish. That's what I like to do. It's kind of my jam. And that's what we're gonna do here today. I'm gonna put, um, the clouds on there. I'm undecided about the moons, although I do love moons. I think I might wanna stick with the stars and clouds on this piece. And here are the, well, let me put my paints away real quick so they don't dry up. I don't wanna dry up my opal magic. It won't be magic anymore. Okay, so look how cute. And the little stars that are on there have like a burlap texture. That's, is that not the cutest little thing ever? Oh my God. So um, I think I'm gonna start with um, maybe a blue cloud and a gray cloud. I don't know, maybe I'll do one of each. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my blue and my gray clouds real quick. And what we're gonna do with the clouds after we apply them, um, we could just apply them and leave them, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know me, I gotta get extra and a little custom. I, got, I like to alter my designs a little bit or the you know pattern the design of the transfer. I like to change it up a little bit. So we're gonna take our metallic paints um, from Prima and we're gonna paint some little rainbows shooting off of the clouds. So when I'm placing it, I wanna make sure I leave, <coughs> I leave room for my rainbow, at least one, one or two rainbows. I don't need to do like all of them with rainbows. So I think maybe if I put, and I gotta be where my hardware holds too, okay? so. Hardware is gonna go here. I don't wanna put him right there and he'll be covered by hardware. So we're gonna put him, um, let's do him right over here to the other side of the hardware. And then now I have enough room for my little rainbow, okay? So I'm just gonna place one at a time and then paint my rainbow and figure out my next placement uh, like that. So I'm gonna play it by ear so they, is what they say, right? So make sure you got it nice and straight. Now on our new um, transfers, we have these grid lines here, which is awesome. Um, see, the grid lines are all obviously straight. I can use that to um, measure against or eyeball against the straight line here on my drawer. So I know that I've got my transfer straight, okay? I could bust out a measuring tape and make sure it's like, you know, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. But I mean, I'm gonna eyeball it. But that's the goodness of the um, grid lines. So you can get your stuff straight. I mean, you can't stick a transfer crooked and then redo it. There's no redos, no redos in decor transfers, okay? One and done. Or one and, <laughs> one do over. So we're just gonna go ahead and start um, rubbing on our transfer with our little transfer tool here. 
You can use the wooden stick that comes with each transfer, it's fine. Works just great. I'm just, you know, I like my little transfer tool here, okay? We've become friends recently. You know, can't really live without him now. So we're just gonna rub on the whole transfer all over the place, stars and everything, okay? Stars there, stars there, stars there, stars there, stars there. Oh my gosh. I'm totally not into kids' furniture, but I have a feeling that I'm really gonna think, I'm really gonna like this a lot because I, I just love the metallics and the pastels and the, the little clouds with the cheeky, the rosy cheeks. Okay, so it sounds like I'm into kid stuff, but I'm really not. Okay, maybe I am. I am a little girl. I never quite grew up, so. I, I do like little kids. What am I talking about? I'm confused. All right, we're gonna rub it on. Don't mind me, I'm definitely a weirdo. Okay, so see how on our drawers we've got this little indented area that goes all the way around, this little um, edge edge that goes all the way around that is just kind of bordering, you know what I'm talking about. So what I do is I take my fingernail or my transfer tool and I like to just go in that little indention to make sure my transfer is sticking in that spot. Does that make sense? So there's one there too. And if you have beveled drawer edges or you're going around the edge of the drawer, like my transfer is not going all the way to the edge. But if it was, my transfer tool has this little handy dandy hook on the end to go around drawer edges. I mean, that's so fancy. They thought of everything. They thought of everything. Okay, so get my transfer on in this little groove here. Finish rubbing it on all over. And once I'm pretty certain that I have it rubbed on all over, I'm gonna to start to peel it away gently from one corner, gently, gently, gently. Make sure that it's adhering. If it's not adhering in some spots, just lay your paper back down and go back over it with your tool or your stick, whatever you're using. This is sticking fabulously though. And I'm going right over my paint job, my dried paint. So I have not sealed this, waxed it, um, nothing. It's, I, this is dried chalk mineral paint with the transfer directly to it. I'm gonna paint my little rainbow coming off my cloud guy here, and then I'll seal that once it's all dry, okay? With a water-based top coat or clear wax. Okay, so once I got my transfer on there and the backing paper is off, I'm gonna go over it with my um, finger. So the pad of my finger or my heel, you know, my hand, uh, my palm, burnish that transfer, pop any, uh, bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles, and go over the edges, make sure they're all secure, and they seem to be so perfect. Now we're ready to paint our little rainbow. So, <coughs> this is gonna be super easy, okay? All I need is a few paints and some paint brushes. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some little flat art brushes like this. Uh, anywhere from, let's say, quarter to half inch will work for our rainbow um, stripes. On this piece anyways, you know, it depends on how big your uh, rainbow is going to be, you know. So, let's see. I think I have four or five colors for my rainbow, so I need four or five brushes. Uh, where are my brushes at? Where are you at, brushes? Oh my gosh. Sorry, I should have had these brushes picked out beforehand, but I'm always running late my middle name let's just go with the, this one I guess nope this one okay so got the brushes little just little art brushes nothing fancy and then our paints that we're using to make our rainbow are um, the metallic <coughs> art alchemy metallic paints they're part of the Finna bear line and there's lots of different colors um, so I wanted to use colors that sort of went with my transfer and my paint. So I chose Spring Blossom. How pretty is that? And you can get these from uh, Prima retailers. If they don't have them, ask maybe, request them maybe, and they can order them for you. Or um, try Etsy or um, Hobby Lobby has some. So I've got that. I've got a pink, which is called Rose vintage rose so these two go with our first top set of drawers right they match perfectly that ombre we did on the top 
And so I'm gonna use them on the second row to kind of marry the drawers together. I've got a yellow here I can use on the stars if I want to, which I may, may not, I don't know. Um, then I've got this pretty, it's called uh, Ice Queen, hm, perfect. Ice Queen, Ice Queen is the blue. And then I chose one more. I wanted a little pop of color that was like kind of, you know, jumping out from the pastel. So I chose a, like a lime green, which I'll be using a little bit of lime green accents on the body of the dresser. This one is called Lime Peel, I think. Oh no, Dragonfly. So these are the four colors I'm making my rainbow with. You know, you don't have to have exact rainbow colors. Just, you know, a few colors that you wanna make a rainbow with. Oh, and I also got, sorry, I forgot about this one. This one is Mermaid Sparkle. This one is also our alchemy, but it's part of the Sparks series, not Metallic. So there's Sparks, Opal Magic, and Metallic. They're all these little pots. The difference is kind of like the shimmer they give off. So the Opal Magic is iridescent. The Sparks are more like sparkly, like glittery. And then the Metallic are just more of a metallic sheen. Like less sparkly, more metallic. Does that make sense? So um, I got my little brushes. I'm gonna go and start with the um, Spring Blossom and I'll go in order. So I would go Spring Blossom, so the Coral, the Pink, the Blue, well, yeah. The Blue, the Teal, and then the Green. I think that's the order we'll go in, so. I'm gonna do the Coral on the outside. So we're gonna start with our biggest, um, I'm sorry, our, our outermost rainbow stripe or rainbow band, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab, I really should be on the other side because I'm, my hand's going to get in the way here of the video. Let's grab our first brush and this I, this I shook. You, you should probably stir them, but I actually stirred it last night when I was kind of testing out what this would look like on different colors. So I stirred it last night, so I just shook it up today. But we're going to get our um, spring blossom and I am I should be on the other side because of my okay I'm sorry I'm gonna have to move this this way <laughs> my otherwise my arms are gonna get in the way of you seeing my rainbow painting my painting of the rainbow all right so here we go we're gonna start with the outermost stripe like I said and ah Okay, so we're gonna just start, and if you wanna draw it on with pencil first, you can to help you. Uh, I'm, I'm crazy, I like to live like on the edge, so I am not gonna do that. I'm just gonna freehand me some rainbowy shape, big arch, that's all a rainbow is, a big arch, right? And you could do a half rainbow, you could do a full rainbow, double rainbow. We're just gonna try to um, maybe do a few different kinds on the different drawers. I'm gonna take this one, and I've got a plenty of space to work with here, so I probably can make a pretty much full rainbow here. And you can do this with any paint. You don't have to use the sparkly paints like I am. Let's go ahead and just kind of trail him off there. Trail him off into the, into the, the cosmos, okay? So there's a, um, let's see, let me grab a cloth here. All right, so, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my next color. If I want to darken up that coral color, I can, but I'm gonna see what they all look like together first before I do so. Um, I think that I don't want it, I want it to be fairly, you know, blend in. I don't want it to be too bold and steal the show of the whole dresser, if that makes sense. So it's easier to add more paint than it is to remove it. Okay, so next we're gonna do um, vintage rose for our next band on the rainbow. And here we go, get a little bit of vintage rose. This is a really pretty pink. And we're gonna go ahead and start here and just kind of make our next band. I'm overlapping the colors just a tiny bit, like seriously not even a 16th of an inch, like a 32nd of an inch, just barely enough to where there's definitely not gonna be a gap in between them. Um, so just barely overlapping them a tiny bit. And like I said, if it helps you to draw on your arch first, then do so. Just do it in a very uh, light, maybe like a white um, white chalk or a white dressmaker's crown or something. But you don't want to, you don't want to use, 
You don't want to use a pencil and then try to paint this paint over it, I'm telling you. You'll see right through it and your pencil lines will keep popping out and you'll be like, what in the world? So, I mean, you know, I'm guessing. Just kidding, it's happened to me before. Okay, so there's the other color right there. Let's kind of trail him off just like we did the top color. And mm -hmm. boom. All right, so our next band is going to be Ice Queen. Wait, yeah, Ice Queen. I love that name, Ice Queen. It just says so much, doesn't it? How many of you guys know Ice Queen? I know a couple. All right, there we go. But it's such a pretty color, right? Such a pretty color for being so cold-hearted. Let's go ahead and grab our other brush and get a little bit of Ice Queen. It looks very similar to the blueberry I used on the drawer faces for the background color, um, but it's way sparklier. Look how, look at it in the jar. Like, how good is that? It's beautiful, so beautiful. All right, so our next band is going to come off right underneath the pink or vintage rose, whatever it was called, overlapping it just a tiny bit. And it's just paint. If you mess up, let it dry and just go back over it, you know? No crying over spilled milk or sloppy paint jobs. Just learn from it and move on. Right? That's what I say. Oh, so cute. I love this color. Ice Queen is a good color. Not a good personality, but as a color, yes. All right, next we're going to move on to our kind of teal aqua color. Now, I kind of like it like this with the three colors, to be honest with you. I'm not so mad about the three colors. I kind of dig it. I hope I don't regret adding more colors. <laughs> this one is the Sparks. It's called Mermaid Sparkle, and it is very sparkly. Okay, Mermaid Sparkle. Sounds dreamy, right? Mermaid Sparkle. I mean, that's like the perfect name for that color, I'll tell you. Actually, I need to mix up my, I'm going to mix up my mermaid sparkle with the end of my brush because these super um, glittery or sparkly pigmented paints like that, it can tend to settle at the bottom and then to get, you know, to get the best metallic sparkle, you really need to mix them up. So I'd like to use the end of my brush and then I just wipe it off and go about my business. So our next band underneath the kind of periwinkle color is going to be the mermaid sparkle. Ooh, look at that mermaid sparkle. Oh my gosh, so pretty. I'm such a sucker for sparkles. Who isn't though? Like seriously, is there anybody? If you are not a sucker for, for sparkly things, I'm pretty sure you have no soul, right? Like you can't have a soul and not like sparkle. Dead inside, dead inside. Kind of trail that one off into the oblivion. Boom, boom. Okay, teal. One more band of our rainbow to go, and then we're out. I'm gonna let you go about your business for the day. I'll check back for any questions too, in case I missed any. But our next and last band on our rainbow is called, um, or it's a green called dragonfly. Look how pretty that is. Oh, I love a good green. And you're probably thinking like, what? That's not pastel. That's not going to go with the pastel dresser and the pastel rainbow and the clouds. That's why I'm using it because I love a good, a good, bold, unexpected color mixed in there with my color schemes. And it usually works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm not going to lie, but sometimes it does. So we're going to throw one little band of this lime green on there. And in my, on the body of the dresser, when I go to blend that, I like to throw in little accents of lime, a color called limeade. Just here and there, it just makes it really neat and gives, gives the piece a lot of motion to have some contrasting colors snuck in there. Um, and a good blendy blend scheme on the body. All right, so I'm just going to gently bring my lime down, trail them off into the abyss, just like that. And then finish out his other side 
of the rainbow. And I believe, okay, overlapping my colors just a tad so there's no space in between my bands. All right, cool. That's our first rainbow. Okay, so I'm probably going to, um, when I choose the placement for my next cloud, which I'm not sure where that will be, then I will determine, you know, how many rainbows I'm going to do. But basically, um, I'll probably have that guy. I might do another little cloud over here or a moon um, or not. I, I don't know. Maybe another small rainbow here. I, I don't know. Maybe cloud, rainbow, cloud, rainbow. The, the possibilities are endless. The sky is the limit. Only your imagination, only your imagination can confine you. Tip of the day. You are, you are only restricted by the boundaries of your imagination. Deep thoughts, Deep Thought Thursday with CC Restyled. Okay? So um, I hope that you... <laughs> You making fun of me? Um, it's not very often that I regret adding more because more is more. That's what they say. Wait, that's what I say. Anyways, I hope you all have a great uh, weekend coming up. And, uh, oh, let's see. Um, I will see you here next Thursday at noon EST. Um, right here in the Redesign with Prima Facebook group. Um, I'll also be on the Dixie Bell Paint Company main page on Facebook, 8 p.m. EST Sunday night. And what else? That's all I got planned. So have a great weekend. Hope you get some good R&R &R or whatever it is you like to do on the weekend. And I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.